Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Kotetsu Mark II from Scythe. This is a tough gaming alliance branded CPU cooler which basically gives us a little bit of this sort of carbon fiber camouflage stuff going on top. We've got some of these uh, orange yellowish rubber grommets here to dampen the sounds of the fan and we actually get a quite nice looking fan on front with full RGB control though it is not the addressable kind. This is the sort of older 12 volt header that you're gonna need on your motherboard or you can do what I did and get a SATA controller for it and just plug it directly into that. Regardless, we're gonna take a look at this cooler and I wanna give you my thoughts on it. So this is the Kotetsu Mark II and there's a lot to say about it, but a lot of this is actually gonna be more based on aesthetics and quality of life than the actual performance of the cooler, which I'll get around to. But the spoiler there is that the performance is pretty good and that's about all you're gonna really wanna be asking from a cooler like this. Uh, it is a single tower cooler. We're not looking at any sort of double towers, any sort of gigantic towers. It's a fairly basic single tower cooler. There are brackets in the box that do allow you to mount a second fan to the backside of this cooler, though I don't know that you really need to do that in most situations. It is tough branded, so the biggest thing that's gonna jump out at you are these rubber grommets. They are this sort of yellow orange. You may love that, you may hate that, but that's what we're stuck with. And then we do have a pretty nice RGB fan here that does push quite a bit of uh, air through these fins, which are a little bit wider spacing maybe than some other uh, coolers that we're used to seeing in here. And I've got this controller here that I'm gonna sort of just cycle through some colors so you can kind of see uh, what the look of this fan is. But I will say that in person, the diffusion on the fan blades themselves gives a really nice effect. So I actually do like this fan a lot with one thing I would say, is I wish this fan came with the gray rubber grommet things that uh, most of the other side fans come with with their other coolers. I think that would give this a nice neutral appearance and I think it would then be much easier to incorporate into non-tough game gaming branded computers that you may be putting together yourself. I think it would make it a more compelling option for a wider audience, but that's not the case. So we are working with this. That said, everything else about this cooler actually looks really nice. Now for compatibility's sake, the cooler does stand at 154 millimeters tall, and it does carry compatibility with a wide range of sockets, including LGA 775, any of the 1150 series sockets from Intel, the 1366 socket from Intel, 2011, 2011 V3, and 2066. And on the AMD side, we're looking at AM2, AM3, AM4, FM1, and FM2, including all of the plus sockets. In addition to this cooler actually looking nice, it also comes with what I still consider to be the best in-class mounting solution that we've come accustomed to with basically all these scythe coolers that I've reviewed any kind of recently, and that is using a basic bracket, a back plate in this case that goes through your Intel motherboard and has posts that come out the other side where you can then attach the actual bracket. And then secondly, you're gonna take the cooler itself and attach it to the bracket that's already in place. Making this a multiple step process actually simplifies things because you get the hardware that you need in place in place first, then you can install the motherboard, and then after the fact, it's much easier than to just go ahead and mount the cooler, which is very easy to do. The only thing you do need to do to get access to the two screws that are gonna allow you to mount the cooler to the bracket itself is gonna be remove the fan. Once you do that, you'll have full access to both of the screws that allow the cooler to be mounted. It's a very simple mechanism and I really wish more coolers would have a similar type of mechanism to this because it was very easy from a user standpoint. Now for heat dissipation, we are featuring here four nickel plated copper heat pipes and they are roughly evenly spaced throughout the heat sink itself. They're not all bunched together on the sides. And this sort of top plate on the cooler itself does a good job of hiding the top crimps on those copper heat pipes. So it maintains a really solid aesthetic with that top plate and the top plate being a neutral color. In fact, a very uh, not flashy top plate color in general, just being kind of a dull gray camouflage pattern is really nice because it makes it easy for the cooler itself to blend into the system. So now moving into performance, this cooler is a little bit tough for me to pin down because it performed really, really well in my test, which I've kept steady across the last few coolers now that I've reviewed. But I will tell you that the room was probably a little bit colder this time around in testing, which probably did contribute to this cooler performing so well. All that being said though, 
It's a great performing cooler at $40. It's in a competitive price range as other coolers like the uh, Freezer 34 Duo that I reviewed as well. And you do get that RGB flare with the fan. So if you're looking for an aesthetically pleasing cooler that also pulls its weight in cooling performance and is gonna give you a nice overclock on most chips. Don't get me wrong, if you're looking at really high-end chips like 9900Ks, 8700Ks, 9700Ks, you might wanna shy away and spend some more money on a really nice cooler that's gonna keep those chips cool. But if you're looking at a run-of-the-mill uh, quad-core, eight-threaded part from Intel, maybe even like an unlocked six core part that doesn't have hyper threading or if you're looking on really any of the amd modern cpus any of the ryzen cpus you're going to get a really solid overclock maybe not the top end overclock but a really solid one out of this cooler and it's going to look great doing it and of course if you hate these yellow rubber pads you can always remove them or just uh, swap out those pads with the gray pads from another side fan if you happen to have one of those laying around there are a couple things you can do to hide the ugly in my case or in my opinion rather ugly yellow pads but if it fits your aesthetic then obviously you can stick with those yellow pads regardless it's a great looking cooler it comes at a very competitive price point which isn't necessarily true of all of sides coolers so i can definitely give this cooler a solid recommendation with all that in mind i will leave the link to the cooler down below so hopefully you enjoyed this review if you did give this video a like share subscribe comment all those things down below do help out a lot you can follow me on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video.